All right, welcome back to KM6LYW Radio, a show about amateur radio or ham radio with emphasis on digital or data modes, moving information back and forth using amateur radio, reimagining amateur radio in the information age. Today's, uh, today's another good example. We're going to actually download data from satellites, not just one or two, but every satellite that's transmitting. Uh, we've got, uh, There's an app here called... Sat Dump, and this thing works for Windows, Linux, Mac, everything, Android even, and this will decode lots of different uh, satellites that are up there right now. Let's talk about it this time on KM6 LYW Radio. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, there it is. Yeah, welcome back. That's the bumper music, cheap bumper music. So Sat Dump, you know, I just uh, kind of uncovered this. Not too long ago, I was just messing around with this. Like, man, I need, I need like a better version of GLRPT, which is what I was using to decode the Russian meteor satellites. And then, you know, the NOAA satellites are buzzing by. It's like, man, it'd be cool to get some, see if there's any updated software. Well, there's something called Sat Dump, and again, this works on everything. This is uh, put together by uh, Foxtrot for Lima Alpha Uniform. Thank you very much for the lead developer and the rest of you here. Um, this is a client software that works on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, and you can get the nightly builds here. Um, I guess you could run this on Raspberry Pi as well. I, I don't see why you couldn't. It's Linux. Um, maybe, what do we got? A satellite list here, a GAC predictor. Um, go back to home here. Uh, latest release at the time of this recording is 120, and it looks a lot like this when you start it. Um, you, that has a transceiver section here. All you really need to know is this device section and the processing section. So you select a frequency here, and then you select a satellite from here. And there are a lot of satellites. In fact, let me uh, zoom in so I can make this more coherent. So again, the frequency is up top here. It selected my uh, SDR play device. Um, I set that up. This would work really well with an RTL SDR dongle as well. Um, so that is the device setup section. And then under the processing section, there are a whole mess of satellites, most of which I've never seen before. Um, I don't know what kind of hardware you need to receive these. Um, I'm just using, again, the RTL SDR. I don't know what, you know, its frequency range is. Actually, in Marsat, I was thinking about messing with that. That would be pretty cool. The GOES satellites, if you have a GOES receiver, those are kind of special. Those are pretty high frequency, and they usually need an amplifier and a remote antenna. Um, but the satellites that I've been messing with are the NOAA sats. Those are the uh, National Oceanic uh, NOA APT sat, and then there's also the Russian meteor satellites. Um, I got mixed results with those so far, but we're gonna, we're gonna try them both here and see what happens. Um, JKL meteor sat, there's an M3 out there, there's a meteor M2 3. That's one I've been tracking, uh, Meteor M2-2, I haven't heard from. It's been awfully quiet out there. But what's cool is you can actually select a satellite and then go select a frequency, like I want the backup or primary frequency. And then if you go over here, you see that the frequency was set properly and it'll do all the decoding that we like. And uh, let me zoom out here. And once we've got all that set up, we simply press start right here and it will begin the decoder. You can see the fast Fourier transform. You can see we don't have a sync because there's no satellites over that. So uh, I'm going to try and see what I can decode from a couple of satellites for this. Uh, I'm learning in real time here, so uh, so bear with me, guys. I, I, leave it in messages in the comments <laughs> if you find some cool stuff. I'm sure I'm not using this properly. You guys are yelling at your screens, but let's. Uh, I'm going to do the best I can. Let's see if we can get some satellite images. All right, NOAA18 is coming down from the north. Let's get this uh, configured. I'm going to press stop here. I'm going to select NOAA18 from over here, wherever he is. JK NOAA APT, I guess that's what we want. We're going to get to specify the satellite, and then I'm going to go over to his signal, uh, which I believe... Let's look up NOA 18 frequency. You know, for the uh, M3, uh, M2 sats, it actually gives you that frequency. It's going to be 137 uh, NOA 18 uh, 913. 137 913. That seems weird. 137 913. 137 913. I'm going to press start here to get the receiver going. 
There it is, we see a signal, and then I'm gonna go down here to processing, we're sent up to NOA APT and press start. Yeah, that's how loud that is. <laughs> and we can hear the satellite coming through. NOAA 18. I'm still getting a lot of static though. I'll turn this down so you guys can hear it. All right, that's the satellite, we can hear it and we are hopefully decoding it. If you look down at the bottom here, you can actually see this uh, image coming in. Let me see if I can go zoom in on this stuff. Pretty hard to see, you know, it'd be cooler if this image was like bigger or something. But you can, uh, we'll, we'll check it out when, once it's done and see what it looks like. So let me uh, zoom out. So again, all you need to do is set up the device section, punch in a frequency, um, and then go to the processing section, select your satellite, it'll know how to do the decode, and then you press start right there. And, and we're decoding whatever that satellite you selected is, is giving you. We're taking what they're laying down. So let me, uh, let me give it over to future Craig as this goes by, and we'll, then we'll take a look at uh, what image was just captured with NOAA-18. All right, thank you, Past Craig. This is Future Craig here. We've got a lot more image. If you look uh, down here, we can see uh, we've got some cloud structures and some, some markers there. So we're looking pretty good. The NOA-18 is now over Mexico, Baja area. We're seeing a pretty good uh, solid fast Fourier transform there, and you can still hear the satellite with a little bit of static. Sounds like this. Get some static. Not too bad, though. All right, and so what I'm going to do is go ahead and press stop over here. I think we got enough of this. It's over Mexico now. I'll press stop here. And what this is going to do is going to write out a bunch of stuff. It says, congratulations for receiving NOA 15 on APT. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so what I'm going to do is minimize this. Now in the working directory, you're going to find some cool stuff. Um, here is, let me see if I can do a reload here, the latest scan, so to speak. And I'm just going to click on one of these PNG files. And we are going to see what this just picked up. So let me uh, turn this around here. Boy, I don't know what this is, to be honest. Uh, that's like un, 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 unadulterated. <laughs> I need to zoom this in better. So we got Sacramento Valley, Valley over here. Let me go up into APTA. So this is uh, California here. So there's two channels for these satellites. There's a visible spectrum and then there's an infrared spectrum. So this is, would be the infrared spectrum. Uh, this is central United States here. Uh, I guess I can zoom in a little better. Um, these are kind of low res, really. I don't know. The geopolitical map is all wrong here. I don't know what it is thinking, to be honest. It usually gets that right. The, it gets the state lines and stuff. But uh, so far, so good. Maybe that's is that's upside down now. I don't know. You guys are you weather nerds to tell me what's going on here. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. <laughs> Got weird stuff coming through. So, I, again, I see California here. Um... I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. This is what we got. This is probably a better one. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys get. Uh, use a better antenna than I'm doing. There's a Diamond uh, X200 up there. Um, yeah, normally the political markings work better where you can see the outlines of the states. And stuff. Anyway, it's cool. I, I think it's pretty cool. Well, I'm going to check out a lot of other satellites. Um, if I got the radios, that will do it. All right, Meteor M2-3 is approaching. I see a little bit of a swell here on the meter on the waterfall and we see the satellite up here is uh going over north america right now i get just so you guys can see this so i'm going to we're 137.9 let's uh kick over here and say start for meteor m2 dash x lrpt 72k we'll hit start let's see what happens we're gonna wait for some sort of sync 137.9, that's what we want. I'm, I'm learning with you guys right now, guys. So actually we see a sync signal down here. Sync, no sync. <laughs> this is kind of a, I don't know, an oblique pass. It's going over central United States and I am in California, the left coast. 
So I don't I don't see the the volume swell here on the waterfall. Normally there's a little a little more action right here. We still don't have a sink. Um, I'm gonna put you guys on uh, pause and fast forward a little bit till this guy's more in range. <laughs> All right, we are now over Wyoming, Colorado, Montana, Pent Montana area. And we had a good sink there for a minute, and it just kind of blurred out on us. If we see the big static ball, it means we've got nothing. And I don't see anything at 137.9 like we had before. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and say that totally sucked. I don't know if it's just out of range or, or what. So I'm going to go over here and stop on the processing. And it will actually kick out some files. And we're going to look in here if it got anything at all. It said failure solving. And wow, thank you patrons for all the support here. Uh, Patreon.com slash KM6LYW. I mean, there's over a thousand of you now. Um, I just can't, uh, I don't have enough time to scroll through these. I don't know how to get through this. It is excessive and I really do appreciate the support. So uh, going to uh, Patreon.com slash KM6LYW not only funds the channel, but it also gets you access to the DigiPy SD card image, which implements all of the data modes that we uh, talk about on the channel. It makes them all accessible via your phone, right? You don't need any complicated screens and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, also, you notice you didn't watch any adverts at the beginning of this. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't support any of the advert people that uh, promote this hosting video platform. Did, did I say that? The AI is going to get me on that. I'm going I'm to get demoted just <laughs> for saying it like that. But patrons, yeah, you make this ad free and you get access to, to digipy.org, the digipy SD card image. Um, I'll be honest, at some point, I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue scrolling through all these names here. I need like feature guests or you know, patrons or something. Um, so digipy.org, if you want to uh, do a really uh, hands-free, easy way to do all digital modes, all data modes on a Raspberry Pi and just access it all via your tablet or your web browser, um, digipy.org. Check that out. That goes to patrons of the channel. All right, guys. Hey, my name is Craig. I am in cool California. Amateur radio call sign KM6LYW and I am clear. <laughs>